Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist. For quite a while now, Dr John Campbell has been minimising the effects of COVID. Whilst early in the pandemic he took COVID seriously, ever since Omicron arrived he has been claiming it is now a mild disease that we don't need to worry about. And even going so far as to suggest that getting infected is now a good thing because it generates natural immunity. I must say I've never understood the argument that you should get infected so that you will have immunity to getting infected. But that's just me. Anyway, back to John. In a recent video, he not only claims that Omicron is milder than previous variants, but that BA2 is even milder still. Let's have a quick look at what he says. Now, the good news is that the BA2 Omicron variant which of course is taking over from the BA1 Omicron variant, which of course took over from the Delta variant, the, but they're becoming progressively less severe. They're producing less severe symptoms. Dr Campbell then goes on in the video to present data showing that the number of people being admitted to hospital for COVID is declining as evidence for this claim. In doing this, John is making a common mistake made by people who don't understand science, and that is he's failing to consider confounding factors. He doesn't know if the people who are getting COVID now have the same demographics, the same vaccine status, the same previous disease status, or the same comorbidities as people who are getting COVID in earlier periods. It's too early at the moment to have enough data to even say whether or not BA2 is more or less severe than BA1. However, we do now have data for Omicron and we now know whether or not Omicron was actually less severe than previous variants or if it just seemed that way. Let's have a look. So this is a study that looked at the question. It's currently a preprint that is being peer-reviewed by one of the journals in the Nature portfolio. Now it would be better if the peer review had actually been completed, but if you follow my channel, you'll know that being peer-reviewed isn't necessarily a guarantee that a study is good anyway. The study is based on the records of 130,000 COVID patients in Massachusetts. And what they did was, instead of just looking at the number of deaths and hospitalizations like Dr. Campbell and many people in the media do, they accounted for patients' vaccination status, age and medical risk factors, and then compared similar groups of people. So what did they find? This table shows the results. They compared the waves in the winter of 20 to 21, the spring of 21, the Delta wave and the Omicron wave. The first column shows the number of people who were infected. The second column shows hospital admissions and in brackets is the percentages this was of total cases. Now in the next column, they show the odds ratio compared with the Omicron wave. So obviously it's sort of nothing for the Omicron wave. And as you can see, it appears that for all the other waves, there was a greater chance of being hospitalised if you caught COVID. But these are the figures before they adjusted for age, vaccination status and comorbidities. When you do that, you get the results that are in the next column, which is headed adjusted OR. And as you can see, the odds ratio is one for the Delta wave, meaning it's no different. 1.09 for the wave in spring 21, and that has a confidence interval of 0.99 to 1.21. So again, no difference. And interestingly, in the winter of 20 to 21, the adjusted odds ratio is actually 0.92, and the confidence interval doesn't encompass one. So based on this, you were less likely to be hospitalized in the first wave, than what you were in the Omicron wave once you adjust for confounding factors. In the final three columns, the exercise is repeated for mortality. And again, once we adjust for the confounding factors, there is no difference in mortality between the Omicron wave and the other waves. 
And if you're wondering which of the confounding factors made the most difference to the lower rates of hospitalisation and mortality in the Omicron wave, this table here provides the answer. As you can see, whereas in the first wave, 99.9% .9 of people had not received a vaccine, in the Omicron wave, this had reduced to 38.2%. And furthermore, the number of people who were fully vaccinated increased from zero to 33.3%. And those who were vaccinated with a booster increased to 25.6%. And you will also know that there is a substantial decrease in unvaccinated and a substantial increase in vaccinated and boosted between the Omicron and Delta waves. Who would have thought vaccines actually reduce hospitalisation and death? Now, it's important to note that there are some potential limitations to the study. It's possible that the analysis underestimated the number of vaccinated patients in more recent COVID waves because some people may have been vaccinated outside of the healthcare network the study was based on. And the number of total infections may also be underestimated because it excluded patients who performed at-home rapid tests as well as those who just didn't bother to get tested at all. The study also didn't account for treatments patients may have received, such as monoclonal antibodies or antiviral drugs that are known to reduce hospitalizations. So it's possible that if they were also taken into account, Omicron could actually be worse. But we don't know that because the analysis wasn't done. What we do know is that you can't just look at hospitalisation and mortality figures in isolation and think it tells you anything about disease severity. So what's the harm in Dr Campbell telling people that BA2 is mild when there is actually no evidence that it is? Well, this comment here, which was left on Dr Campbell's video, shows you exactly the type of harm it can cause. This gentleman says... BA2 did a number on me, sadly. One of those statistical outliers who ended up with long COVID from it. Slowly getting better, but I've been mostly housebound for weeks. And note, someone asked him if he had been jabbed and he answers, no. So this gentleman was convinced that BA2 was mild. And I'm guessing he was also convinced that Omicron was mild, so he certainly saw no reason to get vaccinated. And even now, he doesn't realise that Omicron isn't mild unless you're vaccinated. He thinks he's a statistical outlier. We can never know whether if he'd been told Omicron wasn't actually mild, he would have got vaccinated. But being continuously told by Dr. Campbell that Omicron was mild and now that BA2 is even milder certainly wouldn't have helped. Let's hope the gentleman will make a full recovery. If you'd like to look further into the study that I presented, I provided a link in the video's description. I have also made a video explaining why the natural immunity that Dr. Campbell regularly promotes as a wonderful thing isn't all it's cracked up to be. And I'll provide a link to that as well. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. Thank you for listening. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button so that more people will see it. And if you'd like to see more videos about the science in the future, please hit the subscribe button.